I'm Jesse Yost with Comscope Ruckus. Today we're going to do a demonstration on ICX stacking and particularly ICX stacking from the perspective of devices running FastIron 8095. Before we start issuing commands to set this stack up, we do need to make sure that all of the devices that we're trying to include in the stack are running the same firmware version as well as the same code. So in my environment, these five devices are all running switch code. Uh, if I wanted to have router code, I could do that, but all devices would need to be running that router code. The other thing that we need to consider is the type of devices in our stack. You can mix uh, different models within the same product family, but you can't mix product families. In this example, all of my devices are ICX 7650s, but there is a mix of ICX 7650 48F and 48ZP, which is okay because those are still in the same product family. I could not, however, mix a ICX 7650 with a 7850 in the stack. You do have to make sure they are in that same code family. Another thing that's a little unique about my topology is that I wanted to use 40 gig ports on these stack connections. By default, the rear module, which contains the valid stack port sets, is running in 100 gigabit mode, but you can change the mode on that module so that it breaks those into 40 gig ports. So I have to do that before I start issuing any of my stack configuration commands. I will say in terms of determining what your valid stack port sets are, you need to refer to the FastIron stacking configuration guide for whatever release you're running. In this case, again, we're running 8095. But within that guide, you're going to be able to look at a model specific breakdown of which ports you need to be using for stacking. So let's go ahead and get into the configuration. Now, I didn't want to go ahead and do this without showing it and just have the example ready to go because the stacking is actually pretty intuitive uh, with what we're about to show you. But again, I need to do some things to make that rear stack module uh, become 40 gig. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So if I go into the stack unit, I can put in the command rear module stack 40 G and I can write that to memory. And I actually do need to reload this device. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all five of these devices. And then we will come back and take a look at the next step. All right, so we are back. Um, our devices have reloaded. They should now be broken into um, those 40 gig ports. I'm gonna go ahead and log in here to my first device and just run a show run. So we can see that uh, actually now our module three is a four port 160 gig module. So that is exactly what we needed. And if we look at our configuration here, we do have rear module stack 40 gig shown in our config. So good. So that is what we uh, needed to do as a first step. And as you can see, there's really no other configuration on these devices other than that. But the next thing that I need to do uh, is define uh, what are going to be my stack ports and my stack trunks within this device. So I mentioned earlier the configuration guide for stacking telling you which are going to be valid stack port sets and if we refer to the topology here we can see uh, what devices um, need to be configured with in terms of these stack ports so on device one we need to do 131 and 133 as stack ports so let's go ahead and go into configuration mode let's go into stack unit one and we're going to do a stack port 131 
and then up arrow and change that to 133. So that defines what are the stacking ports for this device. And if we look at our show run, you can see that those have been added to the configuration for stack unit one. I need to do the same thing on the rest of these devices. And again, when we get to device three and four, I will stop and kind of explain uh, what we're doing there with the trunk, but I need to go ahead and do this. So I will speed this up and get these configurations running. Okay, so here we are on unit three. We have defined the stack port 131, which is connecting over to our device two, that's good. But as you can notice, the uh, connection between device three and four is actually a trunk. So it's just got a different command. So we have stack trunk one, three, four, one, three, three, so we're defining both ports that are in that trunk and we're hitting enter. So that is all the configuration that we need to do for device three. And likewise on device four, we have to do the same thing here. So we're doing one, three, two, one, three, one for the trunk and then stack port 133, which is going over to our device five. Okay, so at this point, our devices have all been broken out into 40 gig mode for that rear module and all of our stack trunks and stack ports for this topology have been defined. We are now ready to start our configuration of the actual stack. So I'm gonna go back over now to the device that I want to be my active unit. From the active unit, now that we've got all those configurations applied, all we have to do is run stack enable on this first guy here. This is the guy we want to be active. So we are under the unit one config and we're gonna do stack enable. And we get the message there saying that it's going to actively participate in the stacking. There are a couple different ways we can go about forming the stack now at this point. Uh, we're going to demonstrate the stack interactive setup, but you could also run the zero touch deployment option with the stack zero touch enable command. Um, if you are going to use the zero touch enable command, we have to make sure that all of the devices that are in this topology have no configurations applied to them. So if one of our devices was configured with VLANs um, and the rest of them were kind of defaulted, um, that, that switch that had the VLANs would be omitted from that zero touch enabled discovery. It would actually come up and tell you, hey, we're not gonna join this guy to the stack because he's got this configuration on him. Now, if you were to then go back and remove those configurations, it would then join the stack and get the configuration uh, up from the active cluster and it would join the stack. But depending on how you know um, much configuration was on that device, um, that might be kind of tedious. So just if you are gonna use the zero touch enable, make sure you meet the prerequisites for doing so. So again, from our active unit, we are going to run the stack interactive setup command so we need to run our stack interactive setup command from privilege exec you can't run it from the stack configuration or from config mode we have to be at the privilege exec level and we are just typing in stack interactive setup and it will start the process now we do have a few options we could uh, change stack unit ids so this is going to be useful if you've already got your stack and you want to kind of change the way things are numbered within the stack you can do that with option one you can then choose option two which is going to discover and convert new units um, to members or option three which would convert existing or new standalone units to members so if you wanted to add some devices, you could do that with option three uh, to an existing stack. But uh, in this case, we're gonna run option two because all these devices are new and we wanna kind of take a look at um, all of the 
configurations on all of these guys here. So I'm going to choose two and it's going to go ahead and start probing. It's going out those ports 131 and 133 from my active member. Okay, now it is discovered uh, some units. So it's showing us our first guy here, um, our, our option number one up here at the top. So that is the member we've run this command from. And what it's discovered are listed down here in one, two, three, and four. So again, we've got four devices plus the one we ran the active discovery from. That is all five devices. So it has discovered this ring topology and it's saying, hey, is this the one you want to go with? And the answer is yes. Now it is asking us, do we want to change the IDs that are on this, um, on these, on these switches? So right now we would have the ability to change that ID, much like the initial option one, right as we ran the interactive setup, we can also change those IDs as part of the discovery, but I don't need to do that. I know how these are cabled. Uh, I'm going to want them to go ahead and just populate this for me so i'm going to just accept the defaults on all four of these members and once i do that it comes up and shows me our our topology here so we have five devices and we can see how they are discovered and connected and this matches the topology that we have we can see that We've got device three and device four, and you can see with those equal signs that there is a trunk in between those devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose yes, because uh, we are good with the topology that it has discovered. So at this point, it's gonna go ahead and uh, reboot all of the member devices and put them into this stack. So I'm gonna go ahead and just speed up time here and we will come back once all those devices have settled All right, let's jump back over to our active controller and uh, see what we've got. So uh, we've got a bunch of debug messages shown here for all those devices that have been added to the stack. And if we run a show stack command, we should see all five of our devices as well as their role, their MAC address. Um, we didn't configure any priorities to kind of force additional um standby roles and things like that but you certainly could do that prior to kind of issuing those stack commands to get this thing to uh, be configured as you want for your environment but here we are with our stack and we can see in a show interfaces brief um, all the different uh, port options that relate to all of these different units so um, again we don't, we're not going to go through what these ports mean. We, we do definitely do that in the training, but you can see that now we can manage all five of these devices right from this one active node. And actually, if we go and look at any of the other devices, they all look the same, right? So if we log into this guy, we can see that he also looks like 7651. So um, all these guys are being controlled by these active and standby controllers they all have the same configuration and they are meant to be managed as such